Ready Player One, Chapter Three. The system verified that it was on the chat room's access list and allowed me to enter. My view of the classroom shrank, shrank from the limits of my peripheral vision to a small thumbnail window in the lower right of my display, allowing me to monitor what was in front of my avatar. The rest of my field of vision was now filled with the interior of H's chat room. My avatar appeared just inside the entrance, a door at the top of, the, of a carpeted staircase. The door didn't lead anywhere. It didn't even open. This was because the basement and its contents didn't exist as a part of the oasis. Chat rooms were standalone simulations, temporary virtual spaces that avatars could use, could access from anywhere in the oasis. My avatar wasn't actually in the chat room. It only appeared that way. Wade 3 slash Parcival was still sitting in my world history classroom with his eyes closed. Logging into a chat room was a little like being at two places at once. H had named the chat room The Basement. He had programmed it to look like a large suburban rec room circa late 1980s. Old movie and comic book posters covered the wood paneled walls. A vintage RCA television stood in the center of the room, hooked up to a Betamax VCR, a laser disc, disc player, and several vintage video game consoles. Bookshelves lined the far wall, filled with role-playing game supplements and back issues of Dragon Magazine. Hosting a chat room this large wasn't cheap, but H could afford it. He made quite a bit of dough competing in televised PvP arena games after school and on the weekends. H was one of the highest ranked combatants in the Oasis, in both death, Deathmatch and Capture the Flag Leagues. He was even more famous than Artemis. Over the past few years, the basement had become a highly exclusive hangout for elite gunters. H granted access only to people he deemed worthy, so being invited to hang out in the basement was a big honor, especially for a third level nobody like me. As I descended the staircase, I saw a few dozen other gunters milling around, with avatars that vary widely in appearance. There were humans, cyborgs, demons, dark elves, Vulcans, and vampires. Most of them were gathered around the row of old arcade games against the wall. A few others stood by the ancient stereo, currently blasting The Wild Boys by Duran Duran, browsing through H's giant rack of vintage cassette tapes. H himself was sprawled on one of the chat room's three couches, which were arrayed in a used shape in front of the TV. H's avatar was a tall, broad-shouldered Caucasian male with dark hair and brown eyes. I'd asked him once if he looked anything like this avatar in real life, and he jokingly replied, yes, but in real life, I'm even more handsome. As I walked over, he glanced up from the Intellivision game he was playing. His distinctive Cheshire grin stretched from ear to ear. Z, he shouted. What's up, amigo? He stretched out his right hand and gave me a gave me five as I, as I dropped to the couch opposite him. H had started calling me Z shortly after I met him. He liked to give people single letter nicknames. H was pronounced... H pronounced his own avatar's name just like the letter H. What up, Pumperdink, I said. This was the game we played. I always called him some random H name, like Harry, Hubert, Henry, or Hogan. I was making guesses at his real first name, which he'd once confided to me began with the letter H. I'd known H for a little over three years. He was also a student on Ludus, a senior at OPS 1172, which was on the opposite side of the planet from my school. We had met one weekend in a public gunter chat room, and hit it off immediately because we all share the same interests, which has to say, which is to say, one interest, interest, the total all-consuming obsession with Halliday and his Easter egg. A few minutes into our first conversation, I knew H was the real deal, an elite gunter who had some serious mental kung fu. He had his 80s trivia down cold, and not just the canon stuff either. He was a true Halliday scholar, and he apparently had seen the same qualities in me because he'd given me his contact card and invited me to hang out in the basement whenever I liked. He had, he'd been my closest friend ever since. Over the years, a friendly rivalry had gradually developed between us. We did a lot of trash talking about which one of us would get his name up on the scoreboard first. We were constantly trying to outgeek each other with our knowledge of obscure Gunter trivia. Sometimes we even conducted our research together. This usually consisted of watching cheesy 80s movies and TV shows here in his chat room. We also played a lot of video games, of course. H and I wasted countless hours on two-player cl classics like Contra, Golden Axe, Heavy Barrel, Smash TV, and Akari Warriors. Aside from years truly, H was the best all-around gamer I'd ever encountered. We were evenly matched at most games, but he could trounce me in certain titles, especially anything in the first-person shooter genre. That was his area of expertise, after all. 
And I didn't know anything about H, about who H was in the real world, but I got a sense that his home life wasn't that great. Like me, he seemed to spend every waking moment logged into the Oasis. Even though, even though we'd never met in person, he told me more than once that his, I was his best friend. So I assumed he was just as isolated and lonely as I was. So what did you do after you bailed last night, he asked, tossing me another Intellivision controller. We hung out there in his chat room for a few hours the previous evening, watching old Japanese monster movies. Nada, I said. Went home and brushed up on a few classic coin-ops. Unnecessary. Yeah, but I was in the mood. I didn't ask him what he did the night before, and he didn't volunteer any details. I knew he'd probably gone to Gygax, or somewhere equally awesome, to speed run a few quests and rack up some XPs. He just didn't want to rub it in. H could afford to spend a fair amount of time off-world, following up on leads and searching for the copper key, but he never lorded this up over me, or ridiculed me for not having enough dough to teleport anywhere. He, and he never insulted me by offering, me, offering to loan me some credits. It was an unspoken rule among Gunters. If you were solo, you didn't want or need any help from anyone. Gunters who wanted help joined a clan, and H and I both agreed that clans were for suck-asses and posers. We both vowed to remain solos for life. We still occasionally had discussions about the egg, but these conversations were always guarded, and we were careful to avoid talking about specifics. After I beat a H in three rounds of Tron Deadly Discs, he threw down his television controller in disgust and grabbed the magazine off the floor. It was an old issue of Starlog. I recognized Rutger Hauer on the cover in a Lady Hawk promotional photo. Starlog, eh? I said, nodding my approval. Yep, downloaded every single issue from the Hatchery archive. Still working my way through them. I was just reading this piece on Ewoks, the battle for Endor. Made for TV, released in 1985, I, I recited. Star Wars trivia was one of my specialties. Total garbage, a real low point in the history of wars. Says you, ass face. It has some great moments. No, I said, shaking my head. It doesn't. It's even worse than the first Ewok flick, Caravan of Courage. It could have been, should have been called Caravan of Suck. H just roll, rolled his eyes and went back to reading. He wasn't going to take the bait. I had the magazine cover. Hey, can I have a look at that when you're done? He grinned. Why? So you can read the article on Lady Hawk? Maybe. Man, you just love that crap burger, don't you? Blow me, H. How many times have you seen that sap fest? Sap fest. I know you made me sit through it at least twice. He was baiting me now. He knew Lady Hawk was one of my guilty pleasures, and that I'd seen it over a dozen times. I was doing you a favor by making you watch it, noob, I said. I shoved a new cartridge into the Intellivision console and started up a single-player game of Astro Smash. You'll thank me one day. Wait and see. Lady Hawk is canon. Canon was the term used, we used to classify any movie, book, game, song, or TV show of which Halliday was known to have been a fan. Surely you must be joking, H said. No, I'm not joking, and don't call me Shirley. He lowered the magazine and leaned forward. There is no way Halliday was a fan of Lady Hawk. I guarantee it. Where's your proof, dipshit? I asked. I'm, the man had taste. That's all the proof I need. Then please explain... To me why he owned a Lady Hawk on both VHS and Laserdisc. Disc. A list of all the films in Halliday's collection at the time of his death was included in the appendices of Anorak's Almanac. We both had the list memorized. The guy was a billionaire. He owed millions of movies, most of which he probably never even watched. He had DVDs of Howard the Duck and Kroll too. Doesn't mean that he liked them, asshat. And sure as hell doesn't make them canon. It's not really up for debate, Homer, I said. Lady Hawk is an 80s classic. It's fucking lame, is what it is. Swords that look like they were made out of tinfoil, and that soundtrack is epically lame. Full of synthesizers and shit. By the motherfucking Alan Parsons Project. lame Rama, Beyond lame. Highlander 2 lame. Hey! I feigned hurling my intelligent controller, controller at him. Now you're just being insulting. Lady Hawk's cast alone makes the film canon. Roy Batty? Ferris Bueller? And the dude who played Professor Falcon in War Games? I searched my memory for the actor's name. John Wood, reunited with Matthew Broderick. A real low point in both their careers, he said, laughing. He loved arguing about old movies, even more than I did. The Gunters in the chat room were now starting to form a small crowd around us to listen in. Our arguments were often high in entertainment value. You must be stoned, I shouted. Lady Hawk was directed by Richard fucking Donner. Goonies? Superman the Movie? You're saying that guy sucks? I don't care if Steven Spielberg directed it. 
that it's a chick flick disguised as a sword and sorcery picture. The only genre of film with less balls is probably freaking legend. Anyone who actually enjoys Lady Hawk is a bona fide USDA choice. Mm hmm. Wow. Uh, laughter from the peanut gallery. Laughter from the peanut gallery. I was actually getting a little pissed off now. Uh, I was a big fan of Legend too, and H knew it. Oh, so I'm a hmm hmm. Well, you're the one with the Ewok fetish. I snatched the Starlog out of his hands and threw it against a, threw it against a Revenge of the Jedi poster on the wall. I suppose you think your extensive knowledge of Ewok culture is going to help you find the egg. Don't start on the Andorians again, man. He said, holding up an index finger. I've warned you. I'll ban your ass. I swear. I knew this was a hollow threat. So I was about to push the Ewok thing even further. Maybe give him uh, some crap for referring to them as Endorians. But this, just then, a new arrival materialized in the staircase. A total lamer by the name of Irock. I let out a groan. Irock and H attended the same school and had a few classes together. But I still couldn't figure out why H had granted him access to the basement. Irock fancied himself an elite gunter, but he was nothing but an obnoxious poser. Sure, he did a lot of teleporting around the Oasis completing quests and leveling up his avatar, but he didn't actually know anything, and he was always brandishing over, brandishing an oversized plasma rifle the size of a snowmobile. Even in chat rooms, where it was totally pointless, the guy had no sense of decorum. What are you, hmm, hmm, arguing about, st are you, blank, hmm, arguing about Star Wars again? He said, descending the steps and walking over to join the crowd with us. That shit is so played out, yo. I turned to H. If you want to ban some, why don't you start with this clown? I hit the reset on the Intellivision and start another game. Shut your whole penis, Bill, Irock replied, using his favorite mispronunciation of my avatar's name. He doesn't ban me because he knows I'm elite. Ain't that right, H? No, H said, rolling his eyes. That ain't right. You're about as elite as my great-grandmother, and she's dead. Screw you, H, and your dead grandma. Gee, Irock, I muttered. He always managed to elevate the intelligence level of a conversation. The whole room just lights up the moment you arrive. So sorry to upset you, Captain No Credits, Irock said. Hey, shouldn't you be in, in Scipio panhandling for change right now? He reached for the second television controller, but I snatched it up and tossed it to H. He scowled at me. Prick. Poser. Poser? Penis fellow called me a poser. He turned to address the small crowd. This chump is so broke that he had to burn rides, that had to bum rides to Greyhawk just so he could kill kobolds for copper pieces. And he's calling me a poser. This elicited a few snickers from the crowd, and I felt my face turn red under my visor. About a year ago, I made the mistake of hitching a ride off world with Irock to try to gain some experience points. After dropping me in a low level quest area on Greyhawk, the jerk had followed me. I spent the next few hours slaying small co a small band of kobolds waiting for them to respawn and slaying them again. Over and over, my avatar was still only first first level at the time, and it was one of the only safe ways for me to level up. I read it, I rock had taken several screenshots of my avatar that night and labeled them Penisville, the Mighty Kobold Slayer. Then he got the post then posted the hatchery. He still brought it up every chance he got. He was never gonna let me down. That's right. I called you a poser poser. I stood up and got in his grill. You're an ignorant, know-nothing twink. You've just become 14th level. That doesn't make you a gunter. You have to actually possess some knowledge. Word, H said, nodding in agreement. We bunked fists, more sticking from the crowd, now directing at Irock. Irock glared at us for a moment. Okay, let's see who the real poser is, he said. Check this out, girls. Grinning, he produced an item from his inventory and held it up. It was an old Atari 2600 game, still in the box. He purposely covered the title, the game's title with his hand, but I recognized the cover artwork anyway. It was a painting of a young man and woman in ancient Greek attire, both brandishing swords. Lurking behind them were a minotaur and a bearded guy with an eye patch. I know what this is, know what this is Hotshot? Irox said, challenging me. I'll even give you a clue. It's an Atari game, released as part of a contest. It contains several puzzles, and if you solve them, you could win a prize. Sound familiar? Irock was always trying to impress me with Irock was always trying to impress us with some clue or piece of holiday lore. He foolishly believed he'd been the first to uncover. Gunters loved to play the game of one upmanship and were constantly trying to prove that they had acquired more obscure knowledge than everyone else. But Irock totally sucked at it. You're joking, right? I said. 
You now just discovered the Sword Quest series? Arok deflated. You're holding Sword Quest Earthworld, I continued. The first game of the Sword Quest series, released in 1982. I smiled wide. Can you name the, th the next three games in the series? His eyes narrowed. He was, of course, stumped. Like I said, total poser. Anyone else? I said, opening up the question to the floor. The gutters in the crowd eyed each other, but no one spoke up. Fire World, Water World, Air World, H answered. Bingo, I said, and with bump fist. Although Air World was never actually finished because Atari fell on hard times and canceled sold the contest before it was completed. I rock quietly put the game back in his inventory. You should join up with the Sucksores, I rock, H said laughing. They could really use someone with your vast stores of knowledge. I rock flipped in the bird. You two, hmm hmm, already knew about the sword quest contest. How come you've never I've never once heard you mention it? Come on, I rock, H said, shaking his head. Sword Quest Earthworld was Atari's unofficial sequel to Adventure. Every gunter worth their salt knows that about that contest. How much more oblivious can you get? Irock tried to save some face. Okay, if you're both such experts, who programmed all the Sword Quest games? Dan Hitchens and Todd Fry, I recited. Try asking me something difficult. I got one for you, H injected. What are the prizes our Terry Atari gave out to the winner of each contest? Ah, I said. Good one, let's see. The prize for Earth, the Earthworld Conquest contest was the Talman, Talisman of Penumple, Penup, Penultimate Truth. And it was solid gold and encrusted with diamonds. The kid who won it melted it down to pay for college, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, H prodded. Quit stalling. What about the other two? I'm not stalling. The Fire World prize was the Chalice of Light. And the Water World prize was supposed to be the Crown of Life, but it was never awarded due to the cancellation of the contest. Same goes for the Air World prize, which was supposed to be the Philosopher's Stones. H grinned and gave me a double high five and added, and if the contest hadn't been canceled, the winners of the first four rounds would have com competed for the grand prize, the Sword of Ultimate Sorcery. I nodded. The prizes were all mentioned in the Sword Quest comic. So in the Sword Quest comic books that came with the games, comics which had been which happened to be visible in the treasure room in the final scene of Anorak's invitation, by the way. The crowd burst into applause. Irock lowered his head in shame. Since I'd become a gunter, I had been a, it had been obvious to me that, that Halliday had drawn inspiration for his contest from the Sword Quest contest. And no, I, I had no idea if he borrowed any of the puzzles from them, too, but I studied the games and their solutions thoroughly, just to be safe. Fine, you win, Irock said. But you both obviously need to get a life. And you, I said, obviously need to find a new hobby. Because you clearly lack the intelligence and commitment to be a gunter. No doubt, H said. Try doing some research for a change, I rock. I mean, did you ever hear of Wikipedia? It's free, douchebag. I rock turned and walked over to the long boxes of comic books stacked on the other side of the room. As if he'd lost interest in the discussion. Whatever, he said over his shoulder. If I don't spend so much time offline getting laid, I'd probably just know... I know just as much worthless shit as you two do. Ace ignored him and turned his and turned back to me. What were the names of the twins who appeared in the Sword Quest com comics? Tara and Zor. Damn, Z, you're the man. Thanks, H. A message flashed on my display, informing me that the three minute warning bell had just rung in my classroom. I knew H and Irock were seeing the same warning, because our schools operated in the same time schedule. Time for another day of higher learning, H said, standing up. Drag, Irock said. See you losers later. He gave me the finger, and his avatar disappeared as he logged out of the chat room. The other gunters began to log out and vanish too. Only H and I remained. Seriously, H, I said. Why are you letting that moron hang out here? Because he's fun to beat at video games, and his ignorance gives me hope. How so? Because if the other gunters out there are just as clueless as Irock, and they are Z, believe me, that means you and I have really do have a shot at winning this contest. I shrugged. I guess that's one way to look at it. Want to hang out after school again tonight? Around 7 or so? I've got a few errands to run. Then I'm going to tackle some of uh, the stuff on my need-to-watch list. A space marathon, perhaps? Oh, hell yeah, I said. Count me in. We logged out simultaneously, just as the final bell began to ring.